Hey everyone, I hope you had a great day. Today we are looking at some new r slash I do work here lady stories. I hope you enjoy them. The first story is called I'm your boss. I was assigned as a project manager for the installation of a whole audio visual solution for an office's complex. Well, not the whole building, but like two or three floors. The building was already made, but it was in its bare bones, just floors, ceiling and elevators. A big pharma company bought three floors of this building and decided to make these their new offices. I was assigned as part of an engineer's committee, very scared as this was my first time leading a project with a team and also I was 21 years old. The story is from my first time meeting with the committee at the building itself, like an introduction to the staff and to my future techs and construction workers team. I got to the building in my work clothes, safety boots, hard hat and my bag with my tools, showed my company's badge and was allowed to get in. I got to the floor where the meeting was being held. The foreman of the construction welcomes me, very harshly. Who the heck are you? You are late. Work here starts at 6 am. Sorry, I was appointed to a meeting with the lead architect at 10 am. I'm not one of your workers. I'm here for a meeting and blueprint revisions. Don't mess with me, kiddo. Let me call the office to inform your insubordination. No need for that. Let me call the lead architect to see what's going on. I got on the phone with the architect and she comes angry to the lobby. What the heck is going on, foreman? Then she speaks to me. Sorry for this harsh reception, man. Please come in, we've been waiting for you. Later I was informed he was going to be the foreman in charge of installing all the infrastructure for network, phones and audio. So basically, I was his boss now and he has to do whatever I wanted. God, revenge is so sweet and the hypocrisy of this man when we worked together was incredible. I had to work about 14 hours daily and guess who else had to work with me? I indeed work here, man. I'm your temporary boss. What do you think about today's stories? Let me know in the comment section below. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button. It really helps the channel to grow. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content. The next story is called Even if I was a customer, this was not okay. So I have been working as a gymnastics coach for a few years and worked my way up to an assistant director. We have three gyms in my town, one has been there for decades, another opened right before I was hired and I became the assistant director of the boys program at the newest gym. On one of my days off I got a call from the boys director at the original location, where I have never coached because I started at the second location. He asked me to cover his shift because one of the snot goblins got him sick, so I agreed. I always show up a couple of hours early to get in some training and a workout of my own, so I made my way there and began to work out on the rings. I was 19 at the time when this happened, so I can understand that the new hire confused me for a random kid playing around on the rings because that's essentially what I was. I was also wearing some shorts and a t-shirt so I wouldn't get my coaching attire all sweaty. I had my headphones in while working out and after I landed my dismount I felt a hand on my shoulder. Hello, can I help you with something? You cannot be out on the floor. You need to stop playing on the rings and go wait in the lobby until your class begins. Oh, sorry, I am... Um, I don't want to hear your excuses. Get off the floor right now. Okay, first you do not talk to... I said now. Do you want me to call your parents and have them pick you up? At this point I'm very frustrated, not because of the disrespect I'm being shown, but because this coach thinks it's okay to talk to a student like this. I do have to deal with kids playing around before class, but not this way. We are a family owned company that has shot out a couple of great athletes. We follow very strict guidelines on how to talk to kids and parents. As I was about to tear into him for this, I had an idea. Okay, I get off the floor and wait until I need to be out here. Good, don't ever do this again. I walked off the floor as I was already about done and went into the break room around the corner to change and clock in to set up for classes. 
The rest of the boys coaches were in there waiting for me to get them together for a daily meeting. I've met them all from competitions between our gyms and was good friends with them. I threw on my director's shirt and said, come with me, you guys are going to enjoy this. We all walked over to the coaches hub for our program to begin our meeting. When the new hire saw me in my uniform, I could hear his heart drop out and hit the floor. Hello, is it okay for me to be out on the floor now? Oh, ooh, I'm so... No, it's okay. I don't have a problem with what you did. Kids can get hurt on the equipment very easily while unsupervised. However, the way that you did it is unacceptable. I'm gonna need you to stay after to have a meeting with the gym manager and owner. The rest of the coaches were all about to explode with laughter. We had our meeting and had a successful day of coaching the kiddos. After the last class, I put the new hire aside and told him that it's okay and I'm not gonna bring this up to his boss and the owner, but that he needs to treat our customers with respect. He's a good guy and a good coach now that he has been with us for a while. But I still tease him when I see him at competitions. The last story is called Not a Good Start. I work for a company whose offices are located in three adjacent residential apartments. We installed two doors in between to create one big sprawling office. There isn't much parking, because it's a residential area, so employees are allowed to park in the no parking signed area. This keeps our neighbors happy that we don't use all the available spots, and maintenance can ask us to move if they need to get into one of the areas. The first two apartment doors have signs directing customers. The third door is not marked because it houses the corporate officers that don't deal with customers. I work in that third office. We also have an extremely casual dress code. I'm getting out of my car one morning and collecting my soda and lunch when I hear a voice behind me saying, you can't park there. I turn around to see a man leaning against the outside wall, smoking and playing with his phone. I thought maybe he was a third party vendor waiting for maintenance to unlock the door I was blocking. Is maintenance on its way to let you in? What are you talking about? The sign says no parking. You can't park there. I figured he was a new tenant in the building and continued walking into the building. I'm allowed to park there. It leaves more open spaces for residents. Have a nice day. Now this man steps in front of me. Move your car or you will be towed. Excuse me, I work here and I'm allowed to park there. Please move out of my way. We'll see about that. He marches through the door ahead of me and starts walking to the offices. I follow him up the hallway but stop at the third door, unlock it and walk into my office area. After lunch, the general manager came in and grabbed my keys to move my car. That happens all the time, so I didn't give it a second thought. That afternoon, the GM brings a new employee into my office to introduce him to me. I'm the financial controller and part of the human resource management team. I stand up and hold my hand out to the man whose face is completely drained of color. He stammers out a nice to meet you and hands me all of his new hire paperwork. I ask him to sit down and the GM leaves him with me to get him set up on the systems and explain his privileges. Uh, excuse me, I need to step out for a moment to the restroom. I point him to the nearest restroom. There's one right there. I, uh, need to step outside. He runs from the office. The GM comes back into my office and sits down with a big smile. I think he's a little embarrassed. He yelled at me for parking this morning. Yeah, it's a little more than that. He came in an hour before we scheduled him this morning and blustered to the receptionist about you for half an hour before I went out and got him started filling out paperwork just to shut him up. I explained our parking policy to him in orientation and explained our towing procedures. I caught him at the break saying that he wouldn't tolerate illegal parking and would get this place in line now that he was here. We happened to walk by the parking stickers as we were showing him around. Sure enough, he took the bait and swiped one. I called the towing company and warned them that he might call and to just play along but not to send anyone. As soon as he tagged your car, I moved it into an empty garage. 
About this time, the guy comes back in, looking like he saw a ghost. Ma'am, I don't know how to tell you this, but I had your car towed. I'm so sorry, I'll pay for the charges and go get it right now. What do you mean? Who gave you the number for the towing company? I got it off the parking stickers in the closet. Who told you to stick our cars? This isn't even your area. Seriously, I thought he was going to melt into the floor. I'm so sorry, I just thought she was lying about working here. She went into an apartment, not the office. She wasn't in dress clothes. I don't know. I thought I could catch the truck before it came, but her car is gone. I was having a hard time keeping a straight face through this and probably looked mad due to the strain of not laughing. Well, maybe that will teach you not to assume you know how things should be run. You are running your mouth all day about all the things you are going to change. And you didn't listen when I explained our parking and towing policies. Now I'm going to get her car out of the garage I parked it in and you are going to get set up on the system. Maybe tomorrow you will come in with a better attitude. He looked relieved and also miserable to be chastised on his first day. I got him all set up, no hard feelings and even had him laughing by the end. He showed up the next day with a soda for me and a much better attitude. Thanks for watching the video. If you had fun watching the video, please subscribe to the channel for more content. And please let me know what you think about the video in the comment section below. Have a great day. Bye bye.